hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Whenever we hear the word mutations, it's kind of a scary sounding word. We might usually assume it's quite negative and quite bad for us. Um, but before I start, I'm going to quickly go over what a mutation actually is and just go through a couple of examples of mutations, some which have been bad for us, some which have not been that bad, and show you that you know, they're not all bad. So the idea, first of all, I mean, what is a mutation? A mutation is just a change in the DNA sequence that you know usually is there. So our DNA has somehow been changed. And then there's a couple of different examples. I'll go through those examples in more detail in a second. Insertion, deletion, and point mutation. So this is point mutation is just where one of the actual bases has changed. Insertion is where one has been inserted into the original DNA, and deletion is where one actual base has been deleted. We'll go over those in more detail, but that's a mutation. It's just a change in the DNA itself from the original DNA. And so a couple of examples of, of mutations that you might be familiar with. So for example, the blue eye color. The blue eye color is an example of a mutation. Now, blue eye color obviously is not necessarily something which is negative. Um, it's just different from brown and from green. But blue eye color wasn't always around. Actually, it's not. It's been around only for a couple of hundred thousand years, I think. And it came around because for one individual, there was a mutation in their DNA which gave them blue eye color, and then that passed on from generation to generation. Another example of a mutation, this in this case, the mutation is actually a chromosomal mutation. So the other ones were genes, so it's very small. So one part of this of the, of the chromosome gets affected, whereas in some cases, a whole chromosome is mutated. And the example would be with uh, cerebral palsy. So this is where you have children who are born with mental retardation, with physical impairments, and that is due to mutations with their with their chromosomes. So there might be, sometimes there might either be, I think when it comes to cystic, uh, when it comes to cerebral palsy, it's when you have two um, chromosomes which don't really segregate as they should and you have three chromosomes being there instead of two. So you have an additional chromosome which stops up something when it comes to your body itself. So that's an example of a chromosomal mutation. And obviously skin cancer itself is not an example of a mutation that is a cause of mutation when it comes to our cells. They just stop dividing properly. Their DNA has been changed. They stop dividing properly. And then we get skin cancer. So these are some examples of mutations. And there's many more mutations, some of which are beneficial for us, some which are detrimental. But overall, you should know what a mutation is. And you should know that they are not necessarily all bad for us. Now, I'm going to quickly go over the actual dot point, because dot point itself says, explain how mutations in DNA may lead to generation of new alleles. So how can we have new alleles from mutations? So first of all, again, what was an allele? An allele was a version of a gene. Allele was a version of a gene. I'm going to get back to that in a second. But what you can imagine, we've got our two examples. We've got somatic cells and we've got germ cells. You might have heard of these names before, you might not have. Somatic cells are just our body cells, our normal body cells. And our germ cells are kind of our sex cells. So these will give rise to our gametes. These will produce our gametes. And so, for example, at meiosis, the parent cell, this would be a germ cell, and it will produce the gametes. Whereas the rest of our body cells are just your somatic cells, and they will produce two identical daughter cells just to keep the number of cells in the body constant. If we have a mutation in our somatic cells, so for example with the example of skin cancer, this is, it happens in a somatic cell, then what happens is the actual, the actual cell will be mutated, a specific mu cell will be mutated, and the individual who has it, so a person who has that mutation will be affected, but it will not be passed on to the next generation. Because this is not a sex cell, but that mutation will stay on that individual. It will not pass to the next generation. So somatic cells affect only the individual. It won't be passed on to the next generation. That's because it only affects his body cells. Whereas if there's a mutation in germ cells, what happens then, because these are sex cells, so if, we, if for example, there's a mutation here, then that mutation will be passed on to the sperms and the eggs. 
So sperms and eggs will have that same mutation, sperms or eggs. And obviously our sperms and eggs creates new offspring. So if we have a mutation in our germ cells, that means we create new alleles. So new alleles are only produced when we have a mutation in our germ cells, not in our somatic cells, because the germ cells are the ones which pass on alleles. Somatic cells don't pass them on. So what exactly is the, are these different types of mutations? So we said it's insertion, point mutation, and deletion. These were some of the examples of mutations. Now, point mutation is pretty simple. Let's say this is our normal gene, right? So this codes for a certain sequence of amino acids. Let's say uh, here we have these three code for a pink amino acid. Again, obviously this is oversimplification. They usually have their names as well. This one codes for blue one, and this one codes for yellow one, these three. Now, point mutation might mean that there is one of these bases has changed. So this might not be a guanine anymore. This might change to a, let's say, a cytosine, right? So now there's a point mutation on the one of those points. And now these three code for something else. And if this is being translated, this won't code for that anymore. Now I might code for a red amino acid. So you can see here, we have a change in the polypeptide that's being produced. And these will all come together in the end. They'll be you know, chained up for these popped peptide bonds. But now the new allele, so the new polypeptide, is slightly different, which is why. This is a new version, a new version of the same gene. So it's a new version. A gene just codes for something, but this is a new version. Thereby, it's a new allele because there's slight differences, right? Now this might be how, for example, eye color came about. Now these are usually not too bad, they, they, because point mutation doesn't make too much difference. It might only make one tiny difference, but I'll go over two examples that make quite big of a difference, and then explain why as well, and it'll be quite obvious why. So first, let's go through deletion. Let's say this is our normal stuff, right? It's the same idea. Now, this one, these might have coded for pink. This, these other three here might have coded for a red, uh, sorry, not red one. It was initially it was a blue one, and let's say these three code for a yellow one. Now deletion means that we have one of them being destroyed, right? so one of them just being deleted. Let's say this one is being deleted, and what that means is all of the other ones change position to accommodate that. So these will move in. Again, maybe because I'm only showing a smart, a small segment of that whole gene. Let's say here there was a A in the place. So there would have been A here, and this one would have shifted over to this side. Now I've got an A here. So now we have, at this one would be different, right? Because now we've got AGA. We had something else before, and we had ACT. Now we've got AGA. So this will, will code for something different. This one might code for a dark pink one. This one will, used to be ATC, and now codes for TCA. And this will code for something else. This will code for something new. And all of the other ones, all the ones that come after that point, all of these will, will be doing something else than they did beforehand. Just because that one deletion has completely changed the polypeptide. And this is a call, this is an example of a frame shift mutation. Frame shift mutation. And these usually have bad results. So it means the actual new allele will produce a protein which is completely different to the original one. Right? It's completely different. They're going to have a very different sequence. And the same thing with insertion. Insertion is where we have one being inserted. So let's, say we have, let's say we have a T being inserted here where that A used to be. The A will move a bit to the side. Actually, let's, let's make this one to make it even more dramatic. Let's say this A here moves to the side. It's being shifted. It's also a frame shift. This one's being shifted. The reason why it's being shifted is because a new one has taken its place. So let's say, in this case, it's a new A. So now CAA, this will code for something different. And it used to code for a pink one because it used to be CAG. Now I might code for a, let's say, a brown one, these three. And GAG, this used to be ACT. Now it's GAG, completely different. So again, codes for a completely different amino acid. And TAT used to be ATC, completely different again, codes for a new amino acid. 
and this will go on. So these there will be maybe another one here. This will code for something new as well. So then again, the new polypeptide being produced from this new sequence is completely different to the original one. So you should know that insertion, which was when one is being inserted into the original one, and deletion are examples of frame shift. These have bad consequences for the protein being produced. It usually means a completely different protein, which often means bad things for the actual cell. And in, uh, the idea of point mutations is that one gets changed, one actual base, and that's usually not too bad. It means that you know my, you might have one amino acid being produced, different from original, and that means there's a new allele which is just slightly different. And yeah, why is this all important? Well, again, when you have a different sequence of amino acids, you're going to have a different sequence of arrangements of twisting and everything else, and that means you're going to have a different protein being produced. So that's how a mutation in DNA can lead to new generations of alleles by just shifting which amino acid gets produced. And what you should know is that these mutations, for it to be, to be able to pass into the next generation, have to happen in the germ cells, so in the sex cells. If they happen in the somatic cells, then the individual will be, will be affected, the person will be infected, but won't be passed on to the next generation. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.